This is uh, Jennifer Savage, Surfrider Foundation. Um, so Mandy and I are doing a presentation together. If we could have six minutes. Uh... And we have a present. Do you have it ready? OK, thank you. Um, good evening at this point. Um, we are here on behalf of our 20 California chapters and thousands of supporters statewide regarding Poseidon Water's long history of dodging state regulations and noncompliance at the company's Carlsbad desalination plant. The plant began delivering 50 million gallons of water per day to San Diego County in December 2015 and is the nation's largest seawater desalination plant. It's also home to chronic toxicity violations. As the agency charged with protecting the public trust, we expect you'll want to investigate these viola violations further before issuing another lease to the company for its Huntington Beach project. This is especially imperative as Poseidon has repeatedly disregarded California state regulations designed to protect the public trust. First, during the 2007 permitting process for the Carlsbad plant, Poseidon deliberately deceived the California Coastal Commission with an inadequate greenhouse gas reduction plan by, according to Coastal Commission staff, providing inaccurate information in the course of seeking a coastal development permit. At its CDP hearing, Poseidon testified that its project would be net carbon neutral by causing a one-to-one -one reduction in state water project imports. Based on Poseidon's statements, the Commission approved Poseidon's greenhouse gas reduction plan and gave it automatic credit. The Coastal Commission staff later learned that a 2005 agreement between the California Department of Water Resources and the Metropolitan Water District prohibited desalination projects from reducing state water project imports. Poseidon had been aware of this information, but they did not share it with the Commission. Instead, Poseidon misled the Commission in order to gain approval. Under pressure and after years of pushback, Poseidon has finally purchased and retired certified carbon offsets to mitigate its first year of emissions. This is a strong and sadly characteristic indicator of their unwillingness to act as a responsible party. This was echoed again in 2013 when the company submitted its permit application to the Coastal Commission for its proposed Huntington Beach desalination plant with an almost identical greenhouse gas emission plan. Once again, Poseidon attempted to obtain an automatic credit based on a one-to-one -one reduction in imports from the State Water Project. Poseidon has temporarily withdrawn its application, but not because of a sudden shift in ethics, but only due to procedural changes in the permitting process. Hi, I'm going to take over. Mandy Zagat, California Policy Coordinator with Surfrider Foundation. Another example of Poseidon deliberately attempting to skirt obligations in the company's marine, is the company's marine life mitigation plan. Poseidon is required by the Coastal Commission in their 2011 permit to offset their impacts to marine life from the Carlsbad plant through a 66-acre wetland restoration project with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. And I do have a, a slide um, from the same presentation. Poseidon has been operating for nearly two years now and does not yet have a design or proposal, let alone environmental review for a plan. The delays are caused by Poseidon's paid consultants who continuously offer insufficient proposals, unproven science that is of course then rejected by federal review. This further exemplifies Poseidon's characteristic resistance to accepting agency recommendations and regulations. Sorry, skipped a slide there. So there's the marine life mitigation, and now I'm going to go into chronotoxicity. If that weren't egregious enough, Poseidon is continuously violating the Regional Water Board's discharge permit and have done so since operations began in 2015. To give you a little more detail, in April 2016, the San Diego Regional Water Quality, Quality Control Board issued a notice of violation finding that Poseidon's Carlsbad facility had failed to comply with several provisions of its permit, including failures to comply with discharge prohibitions, failures to comply with receiving water limitations, failure to comply with effluent limitations, and failure to monitor in accordance with permit provisions. In December 2016, the board issued a staff enforcement letter describing 19 occasions on which Poseidon had exceeded daily maximum toxicity limitations. In its annual permit discharge monitoring report for 2016, Poseidon stated that it had exceeded chronic toxicity limits in 35 out of 116, or 30% of chronic toxicity tests. 
Since then, Poseidon has been cited for five more chronic toxicity violations since June of 2017 and nine deficient monitoring violations. 18 months ago, Poseidon initiated a toxicity identification evaluation and has yet to, really, to reach any conclusions to this day. Poseidon has been unable or unwilling to identify the cause of chronic toxicity and even with two notices of violation in 18 months of evaluation. Now that the Poseidon's Carlsbad facility is in operation, it is unlikely that the plant would be shut down due to a water quality violation. At the very least, the commission must take a serious look at this and also take into account Poseidon's track record before issuing the, co another, the same company another lease. Now, Poseidon is proposing outdated intake technology and providing insufficient alternatives analysis for their proposed Huntington Beach desalination plant. They continue to fight the Water Board seawater intake regulations and refuse to comply with the state's ocean plan desalination regulations. The State Lands Commission issues the lease to the applicant and it is your duty to ensure that the lessee is trustworthy and able to meet state regulations with regard to their impact on the public trust. The Commission has a duty to protect the public trust and that includes permits, pollution abatement, water quality, marine life, we ask you to please look into the chronic toxicity violations more closely and carefully evaluate Poseidon's trustworthiness. Do not allow our shared public resources to be compromised by a company clearly more invested in influence than complying with state laws that you are obligated to uphold. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, grateful. I know the uh, commission here is, is reviewing the uh, comments to the supplemental EIR. So you own comments are, are timely and welcome. We have uh, Marcella with Azul. Good evening, Commissioners. My name is Marcella gutierrez Gallinch. I'm here with Azul, and we are an organization working with Latino communities throughout the state on marine conservation. Um, today, I would like to read into the record a letter that was sent in July regarding the Poseidon Huntington Beach desalination pro project, because we believe this has not been um, discuss adequately. This letter, for the record, is actually coming from Azul Ovi Comunidad, which is a local um, social justice group in Huntington Beach, Mujeres de la Tierra, the Alliance of River Communities, the Environmental Justice Coalition for Water, and Orange County Earth Stewards. Says, um, we are writing in strong opposition to the billion dollar desalination plan proposed for Huntington Beach. Poseidon, the company behind this proposal, wants to profit by privatizing a public resource. They have tried to prey on drought fears to build support among the communities least well served by current infrastructure, but we know that Orange County has better options for meeting its long term water needs. Desalination is a bad deal for ratepayers. Rate and its high cost and outsized energy use will hit low community, low income communities and communities of color the hardest. Access to clean, safe, reliable, and affordable water is a basic human right and one affirmed by California state law. We appreciate the state law and local officials, that state and local officials take this mandate seriously. We applaud the progress that has been made to date in water conservation, efficiency, and recycling. All the facts indicate that we simply don't need desalination. Orange, County, Orange County's most recent water plan, published in April 2016, projects a healthy surplus through uh, 2030. From May 2015 to May 2016, Orange County saved three times more water than the Poseidon desalination plant would produce. And according to the experts at Pacific Institute, additional water conservation and efficiency improvements could reduce water use by more than a third. Knowing all this, Poseidon wants to lock Orange County residents into a 50-year take-or-pay contract with no escape hatch. Orange County's state-of-the-art recycling facility produces 100 million gallons of fresh, clean water per day, twice the capacity of Poseidon's proposed plant. It costs just 142 million to expand its capacity by 30 million gallons per day in 2015, compared with the billion-dollar price tag of Poseidon's plant. Orange County still discharges about 100 million gallons of water into the ocean every day, so we are far from maxing out our potential for water reuse. Many of our constituents are already suffering from poor air quality and climate impacts like heat islands, so we are particularly concerned about the high energy cost of desalination. It is by far the most energy intensive option, using about three times as much energy as recycling. All of that energy has to come from somewhere, 
Empowering this huge plant will undermine much of the climate progress California has made, fueling more drought in, fueling more drought in the long term. Furthermore, the proposed location is vulnerable to floods from rising seas as well as earthquakes and tsunamis. We are calling on you to deny the permit for this costly boondoggle. Orange County Water District should focus on water efficiency, recycling, and stormwater projects that can meet future water needs without compromising the health or economic well-being of our people. Thank you. Thank you very much.